Peggy was healthy as a horse, absolutely full of life, vibrant. She truly lit up a room when she came in. She came home. I have to go into the dentist. She had a, an abscess in her tooth, and they'd given her uh, some antibiotics. She was prescribed clindamycin. It's an extremely strong antibiotic. Because she was a kindergarten teacher, she did not put clindamycin together with, I have a stomach, I have gastrointestinal upset, I'm having diarrhea. Said she wasn't feeling good. She thought she had caught something from one of the students. She laid in bed for a couple of days. And the ambulance came and they, uh, they took her vitals and stuff and they weren't good. As soon as we got to the emergency room, within, I would say, an hour or so, we knew things were not what we thought. They later told us that she had a bacterial infection called Clostridium difficile, which I had never heard of. Certainly several hundred thousand people contract C. diff every year. In terms of deaths, over 25,000 deaths a year. Clostridium difficile is a bacteria that can inhabit the intestine of patients when the normal bacteria that typically fills our intestine and is actually healthy for us are killed off by taking certain antibiotics. When one receives antibiotics, the antibiotics will kill off the good bacteria in our bowels and the C. difficile is able to multiply, produces toxins, and causes disease. It can happen quite unexpectedly and suddenly, and maybe even within days or a week of taking an antibiotic for a routine procedure, someone could become deathly ill. I had a sinus infection. I went to the ENT who um, gave me an, a, what he called an aggressive form of tr antibiotic treatment for my sinus infection. Within about two days, I knew that something wasn't right. I was on vacation in Paris, and I started getting diarrhea every morning. And it got worse as the days went on. And when I got back, it got much worse, much more frequent, and was kind of keeping me from pretty much living my life. I was afraid to go outside. I didn't realize that at 35 that I could be so sick that I needed to be hospitalized. Anyone who takes an antibiotic, whether it's in the hospital setting or in the outpatient medical setting or even in the community, should be uh, vigilant and aware that they are susceptible to acquiring Clostridia difficile. With antibiotics being used more and more frequently, um, that is predisposing patients to develop C. difficile. Now we do need to take antibiotics. I am absolutely not recommending to people that they don't treat their pneumonia and their sinus infections. What we are for is the prudent use of antibiotics and for doctors to fully warn the people they prescribe them to about their potential side effects and for patients to question whether or not they need them and particularly to not ask for them for a cold or a viral infection or something that they actually don't do anything for. For many, many years I had these mega doses of antibiotics and nobody ever said restore your gut flora with probiotics, nobody, and I didn't know anything about this. If a patient is given a traditional antibiotic, we would also recommend they take something called a probiotic or yeah. friendly flora. This way when they're wiping out the, all the bacteria from the, with the antibiotic, the friendly flora is being replaced at the same time. Healthy flora helps with our immune system and it helps digest our foods. So it's going to give a lot of health benefit as well as potentially keep infection down. It took me three weeks to really fully recover my strength, my appetite. He gave me fluids, fluids to replenish myself and I had high doses of probiotics to help me heal. The treatment for Clostridia difficile, ironically, is to give yet another antibiotic, which is somewhat counterintuitive, but is still the treatment of choice. She went into the hospital to get better, you know, and to have the surgery because 
my sister's son was getting married and she wanted to be able to go to the wedding and enjoy herself at the wedding. No one tells you that the chances of you getting C. diff are great when you walk into a hospital. C. diff is the fastest growing hospital infection in the United States and in some parts of the country it's also the most prevalent. It is just so much easier to spread it because Clostridia difficile lives as a spore and can land on an inanimate object somewhere in a room, uh, in a bathroom, on a bed rail. How do patients get C. diff? Well, they touch contaminated surfaces in the hospital. The C. diff spores, which are invisible, get on their hands. Then they either inadvertently touch their lips or their meal tray comes and they pick up their cookie or their roll and eat it, ingesting those C. diff spores along with their food. Patients can do so much to protect themselves from C. diff just by keeping their own hands cleaned, especially before they eat. Healthcare workers have to be very careful to wash their hands with soap and water because even alcohol-based rinses don't kill Clostridia difficile. You should feel very comfortable the way you would asking your healthcare provider whether or not he or she washes her hands or his hands. And the research shows that if you clean the high touch surfaces right around the patient's bed with bleach soaked wipes once a day, you can reduce Clostridium difficile 75%. We didn't really know about that at the time. No, nobody you know. mentioned anything. I know we had to wear gowns and gloves, but nobody ever said anything. And the doctors thought she was doing well at yeah. the end, but little did they know that the C. diff was still there. It never really went away. Yeah. It's extremely important that hospitals track C. diff and other hospital infections and report the incidents. We take C. difficile seriously because it prolongs length of stay in the hospital. It affects not just our most vulnerable patients, but some of our healthiest patients. And if you have to go to the hospital, of course you want to know which hospital in your area has the lowest infection rates, including the lowest rates for C. diff. A key thing we want everybody to know is that C. diff and C. diff infections are largely preventable. She was all about education and knowledge and being your own best advocate. And um, you can't be your own best advocate unless you have the information. We must be more informed about C. diff. It's a serious condition, but with knowledge, you know, it, it can be tackled. It can be brought under control. One of our first goals in starting the foundation was creating an internet hub for people to find information plainly written that they could understand. People don't have to die from this, you know? No family needs to go through what we went through. There's absolutely no reason for it. This is something that we can fight. Like if we measure it, if we study it, if we report it, and if we agree that we're going to not let people die from a preventable disease, we can change it. Help and see diff now. Please go to peggyfoundation.org.